Shalom, I'd like to say all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the brothers out there doing the works in truth and sincerity. Um, today's lesson, I'm going to do a lesson regarding the CD people, which are uh, Israelites who scattered in the land of India, or biblically uh, the land of Elam. You know, they were scattered there through slavery. And you know they're being oppressed, so I'm um, just gonna do a lesson on them because you know they're um, they're Israelites as well, and the Lord's gonna deliver them from their oppression, man. Because these people are treated like uh, like shit, man. As you can see, um, they befall the curses. Like look at this little girl, man. Look at our woman. You know, um, they befall the curses of uh, Isaiah three. Where the daughters of Zion, uh, the most I said, he, he will smite their scalp. You know, they don't even have long hair. You know what I mean? Our people's in, po in poverty. You know, being oppressed. You know, they um, they befall the curses of Deuteronomy 28. You know? And as you can see, our people's um, very calmly, man. Beautiful people, man. You know? And the Most High is going to bring them back into the fold. You know? Um, this is off Wikipedia. City. African ethnic group in India, which we're not African, all right? We're Israelites. You know, and they know this. It says, um, the city pronounced also as Shid Sidi or Shidi or Habshai are an ethnic group inhabiting India and Pakistan. Members are descended from Bantu peoples from Southeast Africa. Some were merchants, sailors, indentured servants, slaves, and mercenaries. The city community, the city community is currently estimated at around 50,000 to 60,000 individuals with car... Karnataka, Kurjarat, and Hyder, and Hyderabad in India, and Makran and Karachi in Pakistan, as the population centers. Which you can't number the children of Israel, cause the Mosai said um, he shall make Israel as the sand of the sea, man. You know, or uh, Abraham's seed as the sand of the seed, man, as the sand of the sea. You know, you can't number Israel, man. It says um cities are primarily Sufi Muslims, although some are Hindus and other Roman Catholic Christians. You know, you could clearly see that um this little girl here, she's an Israelite man. You know? But some of some of our people's gonna look straight up like Elam. And it's gonna be hard to um to differentiate, man. But our people were scattered um, um around the world, man. You know, they uh, some of them were able to migrate from India into uh, America, you know, Africa, all over the world. Canada, our people, you know, some of them were able to migrate and, um, you know, and come to foreign. But a lot of our people are back there, you know. So these are conflicting hypotheses on the origin. There are conflicting hypotheses on the origin of the name city. One theory is that the word derives from Sahabi, a Arabic term of respect in North Africa, Slim, similar to the word Sahib in modern day India and Pakistan. A second theory is that the term city is derived from the little born by the captains of the Arab vessels that first brought city settlers to India. These captains were known as Sayyid. You know, um, it says similarly another term cities habishai is held to be derived from the common name from the captains of the Assyrian ships that also first derived city slaves to the subcontinent which Assyrians are those uh, ethiopians you know because um you know the, uh, the arabs the so-called white man and the hamites which are these africans because we're not Africans, we're Israelites who went into the land of Ham, 
amongst the Hamites because they're other they're they're another dark skinned people. You know? Because we're not African, alright? We're Israelites. We went to the land of Ham in uh, 70 AD, you know, fleeing from Roman persecution. You could do your research, man. So, you know, and um, these African tribes or Hamites, they knew that, we, and um, they know who we are. They know that we're not the same people. So they sold us into slavery, man, because the Mosai, um, you know, because we went off, you know, into sin, you know, going off, following different gods. And, you know, um, ultimately, because, uh, you know, the, the wicked Jews, who were uh, amongst the Lord in um, the land of uh, Jerusalem or the land of Israel at the time, they gave up the Lord to be crucified, man. So the Lord, he punished us as a whole nation, you know, because we sinned against him. And, um, you know, the, the wicked of our people, they uh, gave up his son, man. So the Lord, he punished the whole nation, man. And that's why we were conquered as a people. So it says um, cities are also sometimes... Similarly, another term for cities, Habshai, is held to be derived from the common name for the captains of the Assyrian ships that also first delivered city slaves to the subcontinent. You could read uh, Joel 3 and uh, 3. Read that whole chapter, man. It breaks down the whole uh, slave trade, man. Cities are also sometimes referred to as Afro-Indians, you know? So they know, so you know, uh, we're the same people. Like how they call us uh, Afro Canadians or Afro uh, American, Afro Caribbean, Afro Latino or whatever, man. These damn man, all these heathen, they know exactly who we are, man. You know. They know that we're the children of Israel, but they put all these bywords upon us, man. And trying to, you know, try and confuse our people. You know, it says, um, cities were referred to as Zan Zanyi by Arabs. In China, various transcriptions of this Arab Arabic word were used, including Zini and Zinzi. You know, then um, some history. It's a good article. You could go into it. Yeah, a lot of our people, um, they were into that whole Islam, you know. You could go over this article. I'm just trying to go to some um, good points that I saw. There's some good stuff in here, but um, there's one where Gandhi says that they're the chosen of God or something. I'm trying to find that. I don't know if they took it off here because uh, I have the original article. I might have to. Um, I might have to type this I think they took it off this is what Gandhi said I'm just gonna try and uh, find it I'm just going to read it from the original article what I have because I don't think um, they want that information on the internet, man. So, you know, but I just was reading this in some of my old notes what I have. Um, just give me a sec.
Bear with me. Okay, I can't find it, but um, I'm also going to go into the Dalits. I believe uh, it was probably in that article, the Dalit people, because um, they're known as the untouchables. And these are uh, Israelites as well, man. Let me just go into that. It says, um, Dalit, meaning oppressed in Sanskrit, is the self-chosen political name of the caste in India, which was untouchable. Though the name Dalit has been in existence since the 19th century, the economist and reformer B. R. Ambikadar, 1891 to 1956, popularized the term. The Daleks were excluded from the fourfold Varna system and formed the unmentioned fifth Varna. They were also called Pakama. Use for the word Dalit for a person or a group has been outlawed, and India's National Commission for Scheduled Caste considers public use of the label unconstitutional yeah because these people feel like shit because yeah israelites were uh, being up the israelites are being oppressed they were given the lowest uh, jobs you know the worst uh they were uh, you know they were able to live amongst uh, other people the other elamites in their communities or villages they were outcasts it says um Use for the word Dalit for a person or a group has been outlawed in India's National Commission for Scheduled Caste considers public use of the label unconstitutional. In India, the legal terms are scheduled caste and other backward caste or other backward caste or scheduled tribe. Scheduled caste and scheduled tribes exist across India and do not share a single language or religion. They make up 16.6% percent of india's population according to the 2011 census so you know esau trying to number or these heathen are trying to number um you know our people but you can't number people i'm sure that that number is a lot higher it is a lot higher you know and it says um it says from its independence in 1947 and expanded in 1974 india provided jobs and educational opportunities for dalits man so they were oppressed just like how the so-called uh, negro or black was oppressed over here man they were enslaved you know they're fighting for uh, you know basic rights human rights you know like in the 60s with the panthers and all that stuff all these uh organization they had uh, you know like leaders who would try and um, you know so called uh, stand up for them and you know help them gain certain rights so you know they were going through the same oppression because we're the same people man you know the, the curses um, you know the curses they uh, they apply to them too as well man you know let me get um, just one script man Deuteronomy 28, man. You could read this whole chapter, but, you know? Because this was what would happen if we uh, didn't obey the Heavenly Father's commandments, man. It says, um, start that, um, 28 and 43 the stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high and thou shalt come down very low he shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him he shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail so yeah that's how it is right now man moreover all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkens not unto the voice of the lord thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee and they shall be for they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever 
you know, because thou servest not the Lord thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until you have destroyed thee. And that's what happened to us in slavery, man. You know, our people were literally, our people literally had a yoke of iron around their neck. You know, if they try to run away, you know, they'd make sure that they put bells, they put bells on it, you know, or they'd uh, have some, um, some outward, like, pointy things that if you try to run in the forest, you get caught up in, like, some leaves and shit, you know, so, you know, our people were, our people had that yoke of iron put around them, man. No other nation um, can say that they befell these curses, man. Because when you uh, watch uh, documentaries or you watch these slavery movies, man, all these curses in Deuteronomy 28, they apply upon the children of Israel, so-called blacks, his so-called Hispanics, and so-called natives, man. When you watch these films, these documentaries, or you read, man, you, you see these pictures. There's actual pictures of these things, man of uh, slaves with uh, yoke of iron around their neck and all that shit. There's actually evidence, man. It says, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. All right? And that represents, um, you know, the Roman Empire, you know, back then. You know, because the the um the Romans they besieged the children of Israel, or ma mainly of the children of Judah, Judah, uh, Benjamin, Levi, the kingdom of Judah. But now that applies to the uh, so-called Americas, man. And um, like what was the symbol for a lot of these European countries, man? These so-called Europeans, are right? um, these so-called countries where these Edomites dwell, man. The eagle, you know, like Germany. I believe, you know, I believe Greece has the eagle, uh, Spain, if I'm not mistaken, but mainly America, man. That's America's national uh, em emblem, man. Our people are taken from all over the earth, you know, and enslaved um, in America on a mass level, you know, and uh, taught to, you know, learn a language that they never spoke, you know, some of them. You know, and conquer completely, man. You know, a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed. But that was just some of the points. We get verse um, 64. It says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there shall thou serve other gods which. Neither thou nor thy fathers have known even within stone. So, yeah, man. Our people were scattered amongst the world, man. So there's Israelites, foreigners, who's uh, out there, man. This is not just a black thing, man. People, this is not just a black thing. They say, oh, you guys call yourself black Hebrew Israelite. We don't call ourselves black, first of all. Black's a derogatory term. Black is just a, sh a shade, man. Black represents evil, death. All right, we don't uh, we don't call ourselves black, man. We're uh, we're the Israelites, we're the Hebrew Israelites, we're actual descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. All right. It says um, we get back to the article. It says from its independence in 1947, and expanded in 1974, India provided jobs and educational opportunity for Dalits. You know. So lock your hold on one second. By 1995, 0.2% of government sector fifth class jobs were held by Dalits. India, 1997, India elected K.R. Narathian as national president. Many social organizations have prompted better condition for Dallas through education, health care, and employment. So, you know, they're trying to say that they're so-called helping us. But, you know, this is just a plan, you know, what they have, you know. 
you know, to further enslave Jake. You know, get Jake uh, comfortable, man. But they're still being oppressed, man. These are all just fucking... You know, it's like they have to have, like, a, you know, like, s certain Jakes make it just to seem like they're not really... You no, know, like, so it could seem like we have equal opportunity, man. But um, that's not the case, man. Because the system designed where... You know, everything's against us, man. They want us to have criminal record. They want us to kill each other. They want us to be unemployed out there uh, selling drugs and all that shit. And doing all kinds of, you know, of illegal activities so where they could further uh, enslave us or kill us, man. You know? Right now, Jake's, uh, like, right now in this system, like, you know, like, uh, we're in the shadow of the Valley of Death, man. We're going against all odds, you know? It says, um, similar groups throughout Southeast, South Asia and India and Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. So, yeah, you have Israelites who scatter amongst those countries, man. And those countries, they have some beautiful uh, women. You know some you know they're beautiful people man you know our people scattered amongst the, those those people too in bangladesh sri lanka and stuff you know me myself i i like um women from uh, sri lanka and stuff i like women I, I, I like those type of women man i have a thing for those women elam so to speak man you know our people scatter amongst them but as a whole um yeah, our people mingled with them, man. Definitely our people mingled with them, man. It says, uh, it says, uh, SCs and STs have emigrated to the United States, United Kingdom, Singapore, Malaysia, South Africa, Canada, and the Caribbean. So even amongst those, uh, those coolies or whatever, Douglas. The coolies or whatever they call them down there in the islands in uh, South America, whether they're in um, Guyana or Trinidad, you know, in those countries where they dwell, or Jamaica, you know, our people is uh, scattered amongst them, you know. God, those people were, uh, as a whole, they were outcasts from India. They came um, as uh, indentured servants. They gave them uh, more privilege than the blacks, so to speak, in certain areas. But, you know, they were oppressed as well. So, you know, there's Israelites who scattered amongst them. You know, you know look at uh, singers like Supercat, man. That guy's an Israelite. Man. He's like a reggae uh, superstar from back in the 80s, 90s. Supercat, man. You could look him up. He's an Israelite, man. So the word Dalit is a vernacular form of the Sanskrit past participle adjective Dalitya. In the classical Sanskrit, this means divided, split, broken, scattered. I just read Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty four, derived from derived from the meaning of the verbal root to divide. This word was repurposed in the 19th century Sanskrit to mean a person not belonging to one of the four Brahminic castes because yeah India has a caste system the Elam the, the um, these Elamites and we're at the low we're at the lowest of their caste we're at the fifth so we're definitely like not even of their people they're saying basically that's what they're saying we're of the fifth caste and they're just outsiders they're untouchable man you know, it says, uh, according to Victor Primaskar, the term expresses the Dalit's weakness, poverty, humiliation at the hands of the upper caste in the Indian society. This, the term Dalit has become a political identity similar to the way African Americans in the United States moved away from the use of the term Negro to the use of black or African American. So, yeah. Yeah, man. So they're trying to move away from that term, man. Dalit. You know, so you know, so it's like so like they're going through the same thing what the Negroes were going through, us uh, so-called Negro people in the Americas, were going through, man. 
It says, um, Salakia, one moment. Dallas today use the more, use the term Dalit as they believe the term is more than being broken, is in fact an identity born of struggle and as an assertion, which that's all uh, the Israelites have gone through for over uh, four hundred years, um, over over five hundred years, man. Over five hundred years, cause really from fourteen ninety two, that's when um. The Moors fell in Granada and stuff. A lot of them they uh, fled over here in the Americas, and some of them were, um, you know, brought to serve uh, slavery in certain countries in Europe and Africa. You know, in the Caribbean. You know, but um, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Uh, here's what I'm looking for. You could read this article on the Dallas, but this is the main point that I was looking for. It says Harijan. Mahathama Gandhi adopted the word Harijan, translated roughly as people of God, to identify untouchable. So they know, man. These people know that we're the children of Israel. All right? The people of God, they knew that we're, um, they, um, they know exactly who they are because they have our records. They know the history, man. They know. Because Israelites were scattered in, um, Israelites were, uh, were in, enslaved in the time of the Persian Empire, man. So um, they have all the artifacts and historical documents to prove in their museums, their private museums or libraries. They know exactly who these people are and that they're not African. No, but that was uh, mainly the point. What did look for? So the Hindu caste system let me get a scripture and then uh, I get back to this. And get Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11 and uh, verse 11. It shall come to pass. Start at Isaiah 11 and 10. In that day there shall be a ruler Jesse, which shall stand for ensign the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So yeah, the Israelites, foreigners, man, shall come to pass. In that day the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, so amongst those Ethiopians. Elam, you know, which is uh, the, known as the land of India, Pakistan today. Shinar, which is uh, Iraq, How, from Hamath, and from the Isles of the Sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and he shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the disperse of Judah, the outcast men. So the other tribes, man, the, the Israelites who were scattered amongst these other nations, you know, because it, it is the, uh, the tribe, mainly Judah, so to speak, is uh, scattered all throughout the world, man, as well as the other tribes, but Judah on the main level, man, as a, as a whole, you know, that's why it says that, man. It says, um, he shall gather, the, he shall gather together the disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth because uh, as a whole the tribes they already came the um, ten tribes or nine and a half tribe they came over here um, from 722 BC during the Assyrian captivity they came into the uh, western hemisphere and they've been here ever since so that's over like 2500 years ago Roughly, or a little more, but roughly, you know, and um, you can read this whole chapter, man, you know, but um, let me get back to the article, and I'll uh, close up, said so the Hindu caste system, Dalit status is associated with occupation regarded as ritually impure, such as leather work or butchering or removal of rubbish, animal carcasses and human waste. 
Dallas work as leather tanners, manual laborers, cleaning streets, lathers, sewers. These activities were considered to be polluting to the individual, and this pollution was considered contagious. So yeah, they have a, those uh, people and in, in those dirty uh, Elamites who's oppressing our people. They have our people doing the worst, worst jobs, man. You know, doing the hardest jobs, man. The so Dalits were commonly banned from the full participation in Indian social life. They were physically segregated from the surrounding community. For example, they could not enter a temple or a school and were required to stay outside villages. So yeah, man. They were going through the same thing what these what the Negroes were going through in here in America, in Canada, India, oh, where you couldn't share the same washroom as a so called white man. You couldn't go in the same restaurants. You couldn't live in the same neighborhoods. You know? That's the same same exact thing, man. And it's still going on to this day. Um, so, some other little points in here. Let me try to find... Uh, find found some good points. Um, let me see if I find it. Yeah, because our people were um, scattered amongst those uh, amongst the Punjabi too. It's here in this article. You could read it for yourself. You'd see, but you know. That's why a lot of those um, Punjabi and stuff they they have a vibrant culture, man. The way how they dress, their music, they like to sing, dance, and all that. Um, you could read it. You could read this article. I can't pinpoint exactly where it is at the moment. But, uh, let me see if I could find it quick. Okay, yeah. It said in Punjab, Dalits are also known as Ad Adarmi or and Mashabi Sikh. In southern India, Dalits are known as Adiva Dravida. Um, the Dravidians. They're also called the Dravidians. Adi Karnataka, Adi Andhra. Since the nineteen twenties, these terms are used in the states of Tamil Nadu. Karen, um, Karen, Taka, Adhara, and Pradesh, respectively, or respectively, to identify people of former untouchables, cast in official documents, man. You know, so they're scattered amongst the uh, Sikhs too, as well, the Punjabi or uh, this people of the Sikh religion, and they're known as uh, Adravidians too, man. You know. A Tamil, so they're scattered amongst those. Uh, I believe the Dravidians, they're uh, scattered amongst those. They're scattered amongst Elam, but uh, they're scattered a lot of uh, amongst um, the Sri Lankans as well. But uh, that I'm just gonna close up, I'm gonna get uh, one final script. Jeremiah. 49 and 34 the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the re reign of Zedekiah king of Judah saying thus saith the Lord of hosts behold I will break the bow of Elam the chief of their might and upon Elam Jeremiah was a prophet that prophecy wasn't fulfilled all right, and this prophecy is gonna get ready. To, it's gonna be fulfilled in the future, man. In the very near future, because what does the word prophet mean? It means to say before, man. So Jer Jeremiah, he saw this prophecy thousands of years before it even happened, man. You know, it says, uh, "Thus saith the Lord of hosts: Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief, 
the chief of their might, and upon Elon will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them toward all those winds. Alright? And that's talking about a nuclear destruction, man. Alright, because India as well, they have uh, nuclear capa uh, capabilities and they have the nu uh, nuclear missiles. Alright, and they're going to um, be involved in this third world war too. And the Mosa is going to bring judgment upon them, man. For uh, for touching the apple of his eye, man. For, for, for uh, oppressing his people. You know? That's what it's all on. Um, that's what this whole third, third world war is about, man. Is judgment upon these nations, man. You know, for all the wickedness what they've done upon the earth, mainly uh, oppressing his people, man. You know, and polluting this earth, so they have to get judged. You know, according um according to the word of the of the of the Lord, man. And, um, thus saith the Bible, man. It says, uh, and there shall be no nation whether the outcasts of Elam shall not come. For I, I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life. And I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, said the Lord. And I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. So uh, what's the modern day sword, man? That's the nuclear missile, man. You know, ultimately, you know. What's going to destroy these Elamites, man? And I will set my throne in Elam, and I will destroy thence the king and the princes, serve the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days that I will bring again the captivity of Elam, serve the Lord. So, yeah, in the latter days, which we're in. So, you East Indians, you uh, Sri Lankans, you Pakistanians, Pakistanis. Um, if you're not of the children of Israel, you're going to be enslaved, man. If you're not amongst the people who scattered, if you're not the chosen who scattered amongst those land, you're going to be enslaved, man. So um, get ready for slavery, man. With that, I'd like to say our praises to Yah, Bashim, Ashai, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the brothers who's doing this work.